Hello, guys today we will create a car rig inside Houdini. In this lecture, we will only see the basic car rigging, in the next tutorial, we will see how to control the car rig using the keyboard button inside the simulation. So I downloaded the car model from Wirewheel Club. It had some high quality and highly detailed car models. Let's dive into Houdini. Take a file node. Rename it to car. Let's import our downloaded car FBX model. It has material that is missing. So let's delete the material and color attribute using the attribute delete node. Currently, the scale is too big right now, let's take a transform node and scale it down by 0.01. Take a null node and renamed it as out underscore car. Now, we will not simulate this car model, since it's highly detailed car the simulation will be very slow. We will make a proxy of the car and then after the simulation, we will do the transformation of the original car with the proxy model. Let's begin with the proxy creation. Isolate the wheels. Take a split node and using the name attribute, let's isolate the wheels. Now take a for each name primitive. Take a tube node and change the orientation to the x-axis. Increase the column to 50, so the wheel will have the perfect round shape. Now take a polyfill node. In the fill mode select triangle fan. Now if the wheel rotates we will not see any movement. To make the visualization easy let's color few points as green using the color node. Now this will be our proxy of the original wheel. Let's add the name attribute to it. First, take a connectivity node. We already have a name attribute coming from the car model, but if you see the name attribute in the spreadsheet, it's too confusing currently. Also, delete the unwanted FBX attributes. Now take an attribute wrangle and change the run over to primitive. In the connectivity change the connectivity type to primitive. In the code write this. In this code, we are making a string parameter and after that, we are adding an underscore and then we are using the etoa function to assign the integer value using class attribute. Now click on the plus icon to create the string parameter. Now write $OS. Change the node name to the wheel. Now we need to make the suspension rig. Now if you see the original model you can see the suspension is attached to the metal body. In the same way we need to make in Houdini also. To create this we are going to do is, we will scale down the proxy wheel and move it in the upward direction. Again take a for each named primitive. Take a transform node. I have a clip package installed so I have a built-in preset. You can also move the pivot to the centroid using this expression. $CEX $CEY $CEZ Let's scale it down to 0 0.2. Set the translate value to 1 in the y-axis. Now if you merge both the wheel and the suspension it will look something like this. Now the issue is we can't connect the wheel directly to the suspension because the wheel needs to be rotatable. If we connect the cone constraint, its pivot will rotate, due to which the constraint will malfunction. 
To make it workable we need to make another proxy piece in the center of the wheel, which will be our axle. Duplicate the current for each network, and just change the Y translation value to 0. Now if you wireframe the geo you can see the axle proxy geo in the middle of the wheel proxy. Let's understand the constraints making process and how we will connect the wheel and the suspension. This is our wheel, and this will be our axle. Now the wheel will be constrained with the axle. The axle will be constrained with the suspension. In this way, the wheel will be stable in its position and it will only rotate. The axle will move up and down behaving like a suspension. Now we need one more proxy geo because the axle is still not attached to anything. It will fall down if we feed this model directly in the simulation. If we see the car model, you can see this geo we will call this geo chassis, which is attached to the wheel, chassis will be holding the axle position. Let's create that. We need to create it in the center of both wheels. First, let's pack wheel geo using assemble node. Now take a add node. Turn on delete geometry but keep the points. Now let's move both the points into its pivot. Take a transform node. Set the x-axis scale value to 0. Currently, we have 2 to 2 points here. Let's add a fuse to snap the closet points. Take a box node and adjust the size to something like this. Take a copy to points and connect it here. Copy the name wrangle and paste it here. Add a connectivity node. Change the wrangle name to chassis. Now make sure to rename this axle and suspension also. Copy the wrangle and paste it here. Since we already have class attributes, let's just change the wrangle name to axle and suspension. Merge all the geo and we should have 14 name attributes. Set the connectivity type to primitive for the chassis. Cool now we have 14 name attributes. Now we need to create a dummy of the car body. Take a split node and select the metal body. Take a bound node, template view the merge node. As you can see the bound geometry is intersecting with the wheel, let's do some size adjustments. Copy the name wrangle and paste it here. We can remove this part from the code. Rename the node to body. If you wireframe the geo, you can see we don't have enough divisions. Take a divide node. Turn on the bricker polygon and reduce the size to 0.2. Now our dummy car is ready. Now we need to make constraints. We will use the, the RBD constraint from rule node to create the constraint. Take a RBD constraint from rule node. If you got error while connecting the node, kindly disable and enable the node, the error will go. 
In the group type select primitive. In the group name write suspension. Below you can see groups from that select group to group. In the first group we will select our suspension. Put in the end to select all the suspension geo. In the second group we will select our axle. Again put the star after the underscore. Here we are going to create the suspension constraint which will be connected to the axle and the suspension geo. To visualize the constraint take a null node and connect to the middle output. Currently, we won't see any constraints, we need to increase the search radius. As you can see we have the suspension constraint here. Now we need to create a constraint that will connect the suspension to the car body. Again take RBD constraint from rule node. Set the group type to primitive and set the group name to suspension underscore to underscore body. In the group set group to group. In group 1 select suspension and add star after the underscore. In group 2 select the body. Increase the search radius. Now if you see the constraints are connected to the body origin point, but we need to connect the constraints to the surface. In the connection type select surface points. By doing this the constraint will connect to the points of the body. Cool, set the search radius value to around 0.4. Now we need to create the constraint for the axle and wheel. Duplicate the RBD constraints from rule node. If you turn on the primitive count visualization you can see there is not constraint between axle and wheel. In the group name write will underscore to underscore axle. Set the connection type to the center of mass. In group 1 select axle in group 2 select wheel. Make sure to add the start after the underscore. Now you can see before the construction there was no primitive but after that, we can see some numerical on the viewport. We can't see primitive because both points share the same position in the 3D space. Now we need to make constraints that will hold the axle and the chassis. Our constraint will be made like this in the image. Duplicate the RBD constraints from the rule node. Change the group name to chassis to axle. In group 2 select chassis. Make sure to add the start after the underscore. Increase the search radius to generate the constraints. Now we need to make the final constraint which will attach the chassis to the body the same as the suspension. So the chassis geo won't fall when we simulate it. Duplicate the RBD constraints from the rule node. Change the group name to chassis to body. In the group 1 select chassis. In group 2 select body. Make sure to add the start after the underscore. In the connectivity type select surface points. Reduce the search radius to a decent amount. Now let's add the properties of the constraint. Take an RBD constraint properties node. Copy the group name parameter of the chassis to body and paste it in the RBD constraint properties. We need to make this constraint as a soft constraint. Increase the stiffness and damping ratio to 1000. So the constraints will be very hard to bend until and unless some high force applies We to need it. to override the angular stiffness. Set the value to 1000 for both parameters. Take an RBD constraint properties node. Copy the group name parameter of the suspension underscore to underscore body and paste it in the RBD constraint properties. In the strength set the value to minus 1.
Again take an RBD constraint properties node. Copy the group name parameter of the suspension and paste it in the RBD constraint properties. Set the constraint type to soft. Set the collision to disable. Set the stiffness value to 100 and the damping ratio to 0.1. We need to override the angular stiffness. Set the value same as the above. This value will define how much the constraint will bend upward and downward. If you lower the value it will behave more like a loose spring. This value also depends on the mass of the geometry. So you need to play with the value, if your car is smaller or bigger in size. Now we need to set the properties for cone twist constraints. Take a facet node and connect to the middle output of the RBD constraints. In the group select wheel to axle and chassis to axle. Toggle on unique points. Now take a primitive properties node. Copy the group parameter of the facet and paste it in the primitive node. Turn on transformation and scale it down to zero on the x-axis. Now the primitive has been scaled down to its centroid. Now take a primitive wrangle. In the group select will do axle. Now we need to set the constraint attribute. Write this code. The new iterations code will make sure that, in one frame it will iterate 1000 times. So our wheels won't get jagged movement. Also make sure to include the chassis to axle group. Now take an RBD configure node. Add a normal node to fix these soft edges. Set the cusp angle to zero. Cool, now let's set up the DOP network. To move the vehicle forward we need to add some initial velocity. So let's add velocity. Take a DOP network. Let's set up a basic DOP RBD with a ground plane. In the Geometry SRC, select the first context geometry. Toggle on Overwrite Attribute and write V in it. Toggle on Inherit Velocity from Point Velocity. If you play, we can see the car is moving forward but the wheels and everything is getting fall because we haven't configured the constraints. Now take a Constraint Network node. Now take a bullet soft constraint node. Glue constraint node and a cone twist constraint.
make sure to change the data name in the glue and cone twist constraint node. Now in the constraint network select geometry source as a second context of geometry. As you can see now the tires are getting spread. This is happening because we have moved the constraint to its centroid but in the cone twist node, the rest length is still set to 1. Change the rest length value to 0. Now you can see the wheels are not getting spread, but still it's not working. To fix this jagged movement, change the max up and max out rotation value to 0. The max up rotation parameter will decide how much the constraints rotate in the upward direction. The max out rotation parameter will decide how much the constraints rotate in the side direction. If both the values set to default the wheel will rotate in the spherical path. As you have seen earlier. I have attached the image for better understanding. And the max twist to 180. Now let's play and see how it's working. Cool the wheel is rotating fine, but after traveling few meters the wheel is behaving weirdly. To fix this let's experiment few things. Increase the constraint iteration to 1000. Still it not working. In the soft constraint set the stiffness value to 1. In the rigid body solver, increase the constraint iteration to 200 and the number of substeps to 20. As you can see now the car is moving perfectly. You can also increase the error reduction parameter to 0.6. Now let's see how the suspension behaves. In the RBD packed object, set the Y position value to 1. Turn off the inherit velocity and overwrite attribute. As you can see the suspension spring kind of behavior. You can play with the parameter of the stiffness. In the physical tab reduce the bounce to 0.1. Now let's add a terrain instead of plain ground and see how the car will behave. Take a grid node and let's add some noise to it. Take a poly extrude node and extrude it a bit. Now feed this geo into the DOP, using static object. In the collision choose bullet data. In the geometry representation select concave. Cool, now let's add the velocity back.
The car is going in the wrong direction. Let's change the velocity direction. Increase the gravity force to around 50 or 60. Now add a camera and animate it. Take a DOP import node. Import our DOP geometry. Now it's time to transform the original car. Take a split and split the whole wheels. Take an attribute transfer node. In the second input connect the wheel wrangle node. Transfer name and color attribute. For the second split add a primitive wrangle. Let's add a name attribute and name it as a body. Merge both. Now take a transform piece node. In the second input connect the DOP import node. The car is going on the wrong direction. Sorry, I did something wrong. Let's change the velocity and the Tarion grid. Instead of minus 5 put 5. Cool, now you give camera angles according to yourself. Thanks you guys for watching see you in the next lesson. If you guys like this tutorial, make sure to hit the subscribe and share button. You can also support me on Patreon.